Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about how to identify correct breed type in the Kami Corso. We're going to talk, talk about the basics of correct type. We're not going to get into a lot of the details. We'll save that for another day. So we're going to talk about proportions, which is the basics, the starting point of, of any breed type in any, any dog. So before we get into that, let's just go over quickly the different types, the general classifications uh, for canine construction morphology. Uh, there's three basic types. One's a mesomorph, one's a brachymorph, and the other's a dulcimorph. Those are the three basic classifications. Uh, the county course is definitely a mesomorph. And what that means is that uh, a mesomorph's height and width are pretty much equal or balanced uh, versus a brachymorph uh, where the width far exceeds the height a uh, bulldog would be a good example of that. Um, a dulcimorph example would be um, like an Irish wolfhound or a greyhound, where the height is obviously greater than the width of the dog. So those are the three basic classifications, and the county corso is definitely a mesomorph. Uh, a mesomorph can also be, uh, as far as the length of the dog, in comparison to the height of the dog, can be a square dog, it can be an off-square dog where it's just slightly longer than tall, uh, or it could be a rectangular dog where it's noticeably longer than tall. And the Connie Corso is a rectangular breed. It's a rectangular mesomorph. The other aspect is head type. You know, obviously we all know that the difference between breed and breed and breed is, is typically head type. So there's three classifications for head type, two general classifications. Uh, mesocephalic, brachycephalic, and dulcicephalic. The uh, mesocephalic would be a typical head, let's say a, a Labrador or something of that nature. Uh, a dulcimorph would be a narrow head, narrow muzzle. An example of that would be, uh, again, um, a greyhound or whippet, something of that nature. Uh, a brachymorph um, is where the head's extremely wide, the muzzle's short. Uh, an extreme example of that would be, again, a Frenchie, a pug, right? Uh, a boxer is a brachycephalic breed. Uh, the Connie Corso is a brachycephalic breed, uh, although those brachycephalic characteristics are just very slight, very slight brachycephalic characteristics, but they are there. Uh, a relatively large head, wide skull, a wide, relatively short muzzle, very slight undershot bite, a pronounced stop, but not straight up and down, uh, like a heavy brachycephalic breed, slightly tilted back stop, uh, and most importantly, converging planes of the skull and muzzle. Okay, There's a lot of convert, uh, confusion about proper convergence, even convergence itself, and we'll touch on that a little bit, even though this wasn't going to be uh, extremely detailed. We will touch on, on convergence, which is such an important and also misunderstood aspect of breed type in the uh, Connie Corso. So let's, um, let's begin with some basic proportions. Uh, this is uh, some Italian Kennel Club material that I have here. Uh, this is a um, basic drawing, not a good drawing, but a basic drawing. Uh, for our purposes, it's going to... Uh, uh, be more than adequate. So it shows different proportions in the dog and the key proportions, the starting point would be the height of the dog from the point of the withers, of course, to the to the floor. Uh, so let's say this dog is 26 inches, okay? Uh, if the dog is 26 inches, everything else that we're going to be looking at for proportionally correct kind of course is going to be based off of that 26 inches or whatever the height might be, whether it's 25, 26, 27, okay? In this case, we're going to use 26 inches. So the point of the elbow, which is right here, should be half the height of the dog. So if the dog's 26 inches, this should be 13 inches, okay? The next important proportion is uh, the length of the dog. Again, the Gandhi course is a rectangular breed. So the standard says 10% greater from, uh, from the point of shoulder to the point of buttock, okay? So the dog's 26 inches, uh, then the dog should be 28.6 inches from the point of shoulder to the point of buttock, okay? That would be uh, a proportionally correct dog in regards to height, length of leg, uh, or uh, in the, the length of the dog. Uh, 
There is a proposal that's been uh, put on the table by the parent club to change the way the dog is measured. Uh, not only would that change um, how it's measured, but it will change the length of the dog. It will actually shorten the breed. I hope that doesn't go through, but their the proposal is to use the measuring point pro sternum and not point of shoulder. Typically, there's a, there's a few inches difference uh, in any typical dog between point of shoulder and pro sternum. So if we were to use pro sternum instead of point of shoulder, which point of shoulder has always been used in the Italian standard, it's always been used in the FCI standard, it's always been used in the AKC standard. So um, if that change was to occur, then whatever the difference is between um, point of shoulder and pro sternum on dog, let's say two inches, the dog's overall length is going to be shortened by that amount whether it's two inches, an inch and a half, whatever it might be. So hopefully it doesn't occur. Hopefully we will continue to measure the Connie Corso uh, point of shoulder to point of buttock. Um, there are breeds that are measured um, pro sternum to point of buttock uh, with the same values. A good example is a Rottweiler. Uh, is 10% uh, longer than tall. But the Rottweiler is an off-square breed. It's not a rectangular breed. The Connie Corso is a rectangular breed. Uh, so hopefully... Um, Hopefully that's not going, going to happen. So back to uh, correct type. The next uh, thing that we're going to want to look for when we're taking an a initial, initial look at the county course, so see if it's proportionally correct, is the length of the head or the size of the head and the neck. Uh, the standard, the AKC standard, says uh, approximately 33% uh, or a third. Uh, the Italian standard always said just a little bit more than a third. Or the height of the withers should be the length of the head and the neck's equal. So the length of the neck, the length of the head, and the AKC standard should be approximately one third, and the Italian standard a little bit more than a third, okay? So these are some important proportions that we want to see initially in a dog. If it's lacking any of that, then it has incorrectness right out of the gate, okay? Uh, some of the other key proportions that we can take an initial look at, uh, if the head is correct, uh, approximately a third of the height of the withers, then the other thing we're going to look for is the muzzle should be approximately one-third of the overall length of the head. We should have converging planes of the skull and muzzle, and we should have a nice deep muzzle. So if we have those things, uh, everything that, that we just talked about, if we see all that initially, then we have correct type, proportionate correct dog to begin with. Uh, if we don't have that, then the details aren't very important because we have a proportionally incorrect dog. If we have that, then we have a proportionally correct dog, and we can, we can move on from there. So the other thing I want to show you uh, is just some basic head type proportions for correctness. Okay, Of course, the first is going to be convergence. Uh, convergence is correct on this dog. Okay, um, Parallel planes of the skull and muzzle is not correct. Uh, of course, divergence would definitely not be correct. Um, this is what's called biconvergence, um, where the convergence is extreme, which would be an extreme brachycephalic characteristic, which is what we do not want to see in the Gondi Corso. Okay. Uh, something else look at real quick is the correct proportion of the muzzle length compared to the skull, which this is correct. Uh, this one's obviously too short, and uh, this one's obviously too long. Okay, so those again, proportions, proportionally correct. And we're not going to get into details, but again, typically if the muzzle becomes too short, you start getting a uh, shortening of that nose pipe, you get the tilt back. You don't have a flat interior face of the muzzle. So this would be something that would be obvious and, and, and incorrect. Uh, the muzzle, the muzzle and the Top of the muzzle and the face of the muzzle should form a 90 degree right here. It should be flat, okay? Shouldn't tip back and it should definitely never, never protrude out like in this diagram. This is uh, some details. I'm not getting into the details, but quickly on the eye set, the eye set, should, eye set should be slightly above the muzzle plane, just slightly above the muzzle plane. We won't get into the details that we have in these drawings. And the other key aspect of correct type when you look straight at the dog is the muzzle should form this trapezoid okay it should be wider at the bottom than it is at the top it should not be a rectangular where the both planes are, are parallel um, they should be divergent like this and it should definitely never never go in at the bottom like in this diagram so the front of a county course and muzzle should definitely form a trapezoid there's a lot of reasons for that 
Uh, and again, we're not going to get into the details of why it should be a trapezoid today, but it should be a trapezoid. So those are easy things to see initially to identify a correct type. Okay, so I said we would talk a little bit more about convergence. This is such an important and also such a misunderstood aspect of breed type. So let's talk a little bit more uh, about convergence of the, of the skull plane and the muzzle plane. So here I have a drawing and it shows proper convergence, which would be proper for the Conti Corso. Uh, it shows parallel planes. Uh, it shows uh, overly convergent or biconvergence. Um, and then it shows um, uh, divergent planes for the skull and muzzle. So if you see where the lines are being drawn or the measuring points are being used in these drawings, they are basically midway of the stop, midway of the back of the skull, okay? Uh, a lot of people believe because what you see, the most obvious thing you see is the, is the, is the tilt or the angle of the top of the skull. They believe that's how you determine convergence, but that's not, that's not true, okay? Actually, the top of the skull, well, the shape of the top of the skull has no relevance on whether the dog's converging or not. Uh, again, what you're looking for is a midpoint here, at the stop, a midpoint at the back of the skull, and that is what you're going to use to determine convergence. That point to that point. Okay. Uh, quite frankly, the top of the skull uh, on some breeds that are convergent can actually be rounded. Okay. Doesn't mean that the dog's not convergent. Okay. Uh, something else um, that I've been asked, I've been asked. Uh, by people that have knowledge of the breed is whether something of this nature is double convergence. Okay, no, that's not double convergence. That's just uh, the top of the skull is not flat. The top of the county course of the skull should definitely be flat. Um, but you can have a flat aspect and a turn and another flat aspect in the top of that skull. It happens. Um, doesn't mean the dog's not convergent, no. Dog's still convergence. We didn't change anything that had to do with the measuring points or the actual convergence of this head. Uh, this head's not correct, though, because the top of the skull's not flat. Same way if the top of the skull was round, it could still have correct convergence, but the shape of the top of the skull's not correct, right? So it should definitely be straight. But again, we're determining convergence from a point here, and a point here, and then we're connecting that line, and typically it should be at the tip of the nose, okay? The other aspect, when we talk about anything in, in, on, on a dog, is an imaginary line that we use, imaginary horizontal and vertical lines that we impose a dog over when we talk about things. So when we talk about um, biconvergence, you'll see that the muzzle's tipped up. Well, we would take the dog's head and turn it down, then the muzzle, I wouldn't be tipped up anymore. But what we're basically saying with this, or the biconvergent dog, is in relation to the imaginary horizontal line that's behind there, the dog's head is being held properly, and the muzzle um, will actually do something of this nature, okay? And then, of course, the convergence um, uh, would, be, uh, would become biconvergent, okay? So, that's just a little bit of the basics on convergence. Again, we'll have some more detailed stuff moving forward. Not going to go into any more detail, but because this is so important, so misunderstood, I wanted to go into a little bit of detail on proper convergence. Uh, we're going to go outside now. We're going to uh, apply all these proportions uh, to, uh, to a couple dogs and see what we have. All right, we've got a young dog here that we're going to do some measurements on. It's a one-year-old male, and his name's Axel. So first thing we're going to do is what we talked about, which is the most important measurement, which is the height of the dog at the withers. So this dog is 29 inches at the withers. That's going to be our starting point. Everything's all of course going to be based off 29 inches. So that tells us the, that the height at the elbow should be 14 and a half inches at the point of elbow. So we have 14 and a half inches at the point of elbow. The length of the dog then should be 10% longer than tall. Uh, if he's 29 inches, that's going to be uh, 31.9 inches long from the point of shoulder to the point of buttock. So what we have here, 31.9, let's face it, is approximately 32 inches 
which is where my thumb is. So and right now we're going to go from the point of the shoulder, point of shoulder to the point of buttock. And we have 32 inches or 31.9 inches. We won't see that one tenth, which is about an eighth of an inch, right? So the dog is proportionally correct as far as height, point of shoulder, and body length. Come on, Bubba. So what I want to show you real quick is what we had talked about earlier, and that was the proposal to change uh, the measuring point for length of body from point of shoulder to prosternum. So this finger is on prosternum, good boy, and this finger, this finger is on point of shoulder. So there is obviously a couple inches difference here. So what will happen? is if we take that same measurement, because it's the same numerical value, 10%, which we already said is 32 inches. If we take that same 32 inches, and we now come all the way up here to the prosternum, okay, and we go, we go to 32 inches. Now you can see where 32 inches of the dog is two inches shorter than it should be, all right? So that's a horrible proposal, and if it goes through, uh, every dog that's of the correct length today will be incorrect as soon as it's implemented. And every dog that's incorrect or too short today will be correct if they implement that. Hopefully they won't. Alright, so we've got the basic body uh, proportions. We're going to move to the head proportions. So I did a little cheat sheet already knowing that the dog was 29 inches tall. So length of uh, both of his head and his neck should be 9.5 inches based off the 29 inches at the withers. So we're going to come in here, we're going to do some head measurements real quick. So again, I just want to be short, nine and a half inches. So let's, let's put the ruler, put my finger on the ruler at nine and a half inches, which is right here, right in front of my thumb. So let's see if his head, see if his head is nine and a half inches. Come in here where they can see. So, so the overall length of his head is nine and a half inches. His neck should be equal to that also. The length of his neck is nine and a half inches. So we have, again, a proportionally correct dog. So if the overall length of the head is nine and a half inches, then the percentage of his muzzle should be 3.1 inches or just slightly over three inches. So now we're going to see if the length of his muzzle is correct. Of course, when you judge, and you, especially when you have a lot of knowledge of a certain breed, um, you know the measurement's not really as relevant as your eye. Uh, when if you have a good eye for a dog, uh, nobody's going to take a measurement. No judge is going to take a ruler and measure your dog. It's something you have to see. But we're doing this precise with measurements today um, to. Uh, to put everything that we read in the standard, everything that we have discussed, to put it into actual, actual practice. So his length of his muzzle should be just a little bit over three inches. So my thumb's just a little bit over three inches. Bring that in where they can see. Okay, can you everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Again, a little bit over three inches. Mm -hmm. So now the length of the muzzle should be approximately that same three and a half inch measurement. Okay, or th I'm sorry, a little over three inch measurement, which we have that. Last but not least, the depth should be at least a little over three inches, if not deeper. Deeper is always better, and we have that. So we have a proportionally correct dog here. Uh, we have um, the convergence of the skull and the muzzle. And again, we're not getting into details today. It's strictly on proportions, but that's a key aspect as we discussed earlier. So we do have the conver proper convergence uh, here also. We have the proper eye set. The eye set's just slightly above the muzzle plane, okay? Um, and, uh, and do we have the trapezoid? That's the other aspect. So let's take a look for the trapezoid. As you can see, we do have the trapezoid. So we have basic breed type. Uh, this is a correct example of the breed. Is he the best example, exceptional example? No. No, not at all. He's just a proportionally correct example of the breed. So I'm going to get another dog now. Okay, I've got Shugo here. He's a three-year-old male. And I brought him this time because he's a little bit less proportionally correct than the dog that we just looked at. So let's start again um, with our first measurement. 
which as we know is the height at the withers. So this dog is 20, 26 inches at the withers. So that means the pointed elbow should be, this pointed elbow should be 13 inches, which it is. That means his length of body should be uh, 28.6 inches long, or a little over 28 and a half inches from the point of shoulder to the point of buttock, which is right here around the outside of my thumb. So this dog is just a little bit short. And I knew he was a little bit short, and that's why I'm a little short of body, and that's why I brought him out here for this. Come here, Shiki. Come on. Shiki. Shiki. Good boy. Good boy. So now again, we're gonna, we know he's short of body, but we're gonna go ahead and, and measure him. Come on, Bobo. We're gonna go ahead and measure him for prosternum. Stack up again, Bobo. We're gonna measure him for prosternum to point of buttock uh, using that same. 28 and a half measurement that he should be. So now here's his prosternum. If we go prosternum to point of buttock, now this dog is correct. Okay. Again, the difference is going to be when you measure prosternum versus point of shoulder, the difference is going to be whatever that difference is, prosternum to point of shoulder. And again, it's a couple inches. So that's why it's a very bad proposal. Uh, the county course has always been measured, Italian and AKC standard, point of shoulder, not pro sternum, to point of buttock. So hopefully that won't occur. All right, so now that we know that his body proportions um, are a little lacking in correctness, we're gonna go ahead and uh, measure his head. Uh, so he is um, 26 inches at the shoulders, which means 33% approximately a third of that for the length of his head and the length uh, of his neck should be eight and a half inches. So once again, we're going to measure his overall head length of his head at eight and a half inches is which is where my thumb is. So overall, overall his length of head is correct. Stack. Okay. So the length of muzzle, obviously, for me, is short on this dog, shorter than a third. So if the length of his head is eight and a half inches, the length of his muzzle should be 2.8 inches, or just a little less than three inches. So let's see what we have if we put my thumb on just a little bit less than three inches to measure the length of his muzzle. Good boy. Well, you can see, obviously, that his muzzle's short, right? Muzzle's definitely short. So if his muzzle's short, then probably it's gonna be wider than it should be. It should be almost as wide as it is long. And again, stack, his muzzle is wider than it should be. So his muzzle is proportionately incorrect, okay? Uh, the depth is obviously good, uh, especially with a shorter muzzle, so I don't even think we have to put the ruler on there. So this is a, a dog that's proportionally incorrect. Is he extremely proportionally incorrect? No. This dog's actually a grand champion, okay? Should this dog um, place above the black dog that we had earlier? No, he shouldn't. He shouldn't because the black dog is way more proportionally correct um, than, than he is. So the black dog should never place above him. Now, should this dog place above dogs that are even less proportionally correct? or less structurally sound. Yes, he should. That's how he became a grand champion. Uh, is he ideal? No. Um, he's not ideal, uh, but all dogs have faults. But the biggest aspect of the two dogs I showed you was I wanted to show you a proportionally correct dog and a dog that's lacking in proportional correctness. And, uh, and that's something that, that obviously I've shown you today, um, right down to actual measurements. Um, one other thing I want to touch base on uh, as far as the, the first dog we had out here, uh, and that's the fact that he was 29 inches at the withers. The standard says that a male should be 25 to 27 and a half inches. So the dog's slightly over standard, inch and a half over standard at the withers. That's not uncommon for a working breed. Working breeds typically are not measured 
um, with wickets or, or with scales. As we all know, the Italian standard has always stated that uh, a male should be 110 pounds and a fish should be 100 pounds. And we all know that the Italian champions, the world winners, the Raduno winners, um, you know, all of the dogs typically, even to that standard being judged in Europe or in Italy, far exceed the weight. Uh, it's not uncommon for working breed to exceed whatever that numerical value is. Um, the aspect of that is, is the dog still functional? Can the dog still work? Can the dog still perform the task that it was bred or historically should be able to perform? Okay? It's like going down the interstate. I mean, those numbers are in there and they're a reference. If you're down the interstate, you're doing 70, you know, 70 is the, the speed limit. Okay, you better get in the right lane. People are gonna come by. I usually do 80, maybe sometimes 85 on the interstate. I've never got a ticket. If I'm doing 100, 110, I'll probably get pulled over and get a ticket. Okay. So yes, the black dog was slightly over. There's lots of dogs that are slightly over, okay? Um, so dogs that are slightly over again in weight, uh, they're, they're being judged the FCI standard. It's not uncommon with a burnt working breed. It's how much over they are, and okay? do they become dysfunctional? If they're no longer functional, that's when they should be penalized. But even the dog being slightly over standard, every aspect of those measurements were proportionally correct. All right, I appreciate everyone. Okay, so that's going to conclude uh, this episode, which was strictly about the basics, the bullet points of breed type. Again, we'll get into more details, whether it's dentition or what have you, uh, another time. But these were the basics. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you took a couple things away from it today. Um, and again, the two dogs that I presented, um, uh, the black dog being proportionally correct, uh, the Brendel dog being less proportionally correct, I chose those two dogs for that specific purpose. Um, and that's something, again, that uh, if you have a good eye for it, you don't need the ruler. Uh, you don't have to measure the dogs, but we did it. Uh, we wanted to put everything uh, into practice, uh, uh, being uh, totally objective not subjective um, but it's uh it's obvious for those that have an eye um you know the the proportions the correctness and uh and what have you what we present those two dogs today uh not that um the brown dog's an extremely bad dog he's not um he's better than a lot of dogs um, but he's not as proportionally correct not as bullet point correct uh, as the black dog and also the black dog as i said earlier was a little bit over standard but i wanted to uh using twofold uh, for the aspect of being proportionally correct, even though he's a little bit over standard in height. Uh, again, there's no, uh, there's no wicket gonna come out in a course of a ring or any working breed ring, so that's not an uncommon thing. So uh, I got, hope you guys enjoyed it, and, uh, and we're gonna have some more stuff for you in the very near future. Thank you.